all of them have been debunked 101 times over. And for much as flat earthers say you should question things, they never seem to question their own logic. Rachel is a bloody force to be reckoned with. The worst day for flat earth is when she, when she realized that she was wrong. Is he a true flat earther? Not a bloody chance in hell. Damn! Today, I'm speaking with Dave McKeegan. If you don't know, Dave is a popular YouTuber, science communicator, debunker, and professional photographer. We covered a variety of topics, and I've broken our conversation into two parts. In this video, we discuss flat earth indoctrination, the different levels of dishonesty among flat earth content creators, their explanations as to why anyone would want to keep the shape of the earth a secret, the psychology of belief, religion, and other things. In part two of our conversation, which will be available two days after this one, Dave describes the evolution of his YouTube channel, that time a flat earther challenged him to photograph the International Space Station, and more. There will be a link to part two in the description as well as on screen at the end of this video. Big thank you to Dave for the conversation. I've learned a lot from his videos over the past year or so, and the fact that he's debunking flat earth and other conspiracies the whole time makes it even more enjoyable. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you go and check out his channel. There will be a link in the description below. As always, if you enjoy these kinds of conversations and want to see more like this, let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. All right, that's it. Now on to my conversation with Dave McKeegan. What's up, everybody? I'm back with one of my favorite YouTubers from 2024, Dave McKeegan. Dave, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. First off, I have to ask... How long have you been working for NASA and what are they paying you? Well, unfortunately, I've signed a, a non-disclosure agreement. I can't tell you that. Yeah, okay. But you do admit to working for NASA. Good, good. That's what I thought. Your YouTube content for the last year and a half has been mostly now flat earth. It's using science and photography and your knowledge of it to push back and debunk some of the claims going around on YouTube. What are you hoping to accomplish with this? I've asked this of Dan and MC Tune. What are you hoping to accomplish? Who are you targeting when you publish your videos? Um, to be honest, I'm kind of just targeting anybody that wants to listen. Because at the end of the day, I did this as a t-shirt design, took the play on the, the old, you can lead a horse to water expression and just said, you can make it, you can lead a flat earther <laughs> to knowledge, but you can't make them think. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. it's people that actually want to learn you know, we're actually interested in in listening and taking on board posing thoughts, then, you know, great. The fact that people who don't believe the Earth is, is flat and the people that know we landed on the moon are watching my videos and still learning from them mm. is is great for me. Um, you know, and, and, and the thing is, the knowledge goes both ways as well. Like, loads of people say, why am I wasting my time? making all these flat earth videos I'm like well some people might genuinely want to learn about some stuff and there's there's things that i know that other people might not and so that's giving them knowledge but also then people comment on the videos and, and expand on points that i've made or or give more information i get emails on an almost daily basis from people saying you know you you should check this out if you consider doing videos about this and there's so much that I've learned that 18 months ago I knew nothing about. What was your experience in physics up until, well, prior to making that, that first video? Uh, so, well, officially, like kind of education-wise, I did physics up to A level. I did, I did physics, maths, chemistry, and computing at A level and then went on to university and did the degree in computing. But physics in general, I don't know, I've just always, I've always enjoyed physics and, and really just science as well, but, but physics mainly I've really enjoyed and, and wanting to understand how things work. Like when I started doing photography videos, most photography channels were doing either reviewing gear, how well does it work, you know, is it is it good value for money and stuff, or were doing videos about taking photos the actual photography process and and the artistic side of things whereas i started then doing a lot of videos about the physics behind how does you know what determines focal length and how with the aperture numbers what the hell does all that mean and really wanting to for my own benefit i wanted to understand what everything meant and then share that knowledge as well you know and the same kind of thing came with doing these videos i I don't know why I inherently seem to have a method of explaining things that people find engaging and understanding that, you know, I don't know exactly what it is, but the way that I can explain things just is, I say dumbed down, but it's, it's simplified enough that it makes it really obvious for people who maybe 
knew the basics or you know had heard the explanations but couldn't just couldn't get the pieces to all fit together yeah. you know so that that drives me to make the videos as well is the fact that you know people just people are still learning from it whether they're a flat earther or not they're still able to learn from it you don't go after flat earthers despite receiving a decent amount of ire and videos targeted at you or reactions and quote unquote debunks of your videos and your response is always measured straightforward and fact-based i i can't be bothered kicking up kicking up dirt for it i know some people some people have been led down a rabbit hole by deceitful people and it's you know it's not really their fault you know the way some the way some flat earthers portray things are can be quite convincing and and i think i know a lot of people will get very defensive when they're accused of being an idiot and and kind of close themselves off so i think some people you know if, if you've got a flat earther who gets called an idiot they're not going to, they're just going to mentally switch off and check out from any explanation because they're just going to think I've just been insulted. So you know, I, I tend to stay, stay clear of that and think I will just present the information. Either people are going to listen to it or they're not. If they are great, they can make up their own, dis up their own minds. If they're not, it doesn't matter what I say. I've asked everyone I've spoken with their opinion on the honesty of some of the flat earthers that we're aware. This is separate from the people who are consuming content. I'm 100% certain that there are people watching those videos that are just, like you said, have been fooled and deceived into believing the earth is flat. They just maybe didn't have the formal education. But what is your opinion on the people creating the content? I asked Rachel last night to the first time she heard a flat earther was through Eric Dubé and his 200 proofs. So let's start there. Does he actually believe the earth is flat or is he just a grifter? I've not given much time to, to debate videos. I think I've, I watched one and then I ended up making a video referencing it because he just, he doesn't give as much as he talked about wanting to give scientific you know scientific observation scientific explanations his videos just entirely seem to be memes and him talking complete crap over the top of them effort in explaining the flat earth or, or any of it, it just seems to be he seems to be threading a line of trying to sow doubt into people's minds and then just leaving them to go and find their own way from there so i don't think he's overly honest about it but i've not given that's only from what I've seen. I've not watched too many of his videos, to be honest, because there never seems to be anything really within them. Everyone gives a very similar response. He's a tough one because he's very closed off to the community. I want to ask you about a couple others who are kind of the opposite and who have made videos about you and you've made videos about them. Let me ask you about Flatsoid. Flatsoid's a bit of a uh, bit of a, an interesting one. The way the way the amount of devotion he puts into arguing the points, it seems like he genuinely believes it. But he's also been caught out many a times where he gets proven wrong and then just kind of steers clear of it. And I think that for me is where with a lot of flat earthers and people in general, I think conspiracy theorists in general, that is where honesty comes in is not getting something wrong because everyone's human. Everyone's going to make mistakes. I, I've said things before that, you know, through I've just misunderstood something or not found all the information and, and ran slightly in the wrong direction and people have corrected me about it. It's what you then do having learned that you are wrong or yep. getting caught out you know if you're going to turn around and own up to the mistake and say actually no i said that that was incorrect then you know adjust accordingly that's being intellectually honest the dishonesty side of it is turning around and or just turning a blind eye to it and carrying on down that avenue of spouting the same thing and and flat has been caught out on many many a times where like he will bring up some citation for like he did it the other week he brought up gravity and gas pressure he was having a debate with i think it was ftfe and he and he kept bringing up where's where's the equations for gravity in in gas laws and then brought up a website that that the the had a, a little interactive animator thing for gas pressure with no sign of gravity on it so he's taken it as well there's no gravity in gas laws but he's it's since been shown there are some gas laws that have gravity in the equation and the, the very same program website that he was using, one of the other simulators on there is gas pressure and how it behaves with a big slider for gravity. But he won't then go, oh, there is gravity in it. Well, okay, maybe gravity is not actually gravity. It's something else. Or, you know, he, he, 
you know, he's he just he stays clear of stuff he knows he can't explain. And so it's like I think all flat earthers are dishonest to an extent. It's just whether they're dishonest to themselves or to everybody else. I think there's some flat earthers who know they are being dishonest. They know that there's stuff they can't explain that doesn't work on a flat earth. But rather than try and figure out a, an explanation for it, they just go, I can't get it. I'm going to go somewhere else. You know, I'm going to deviate to something else, which is how pretty much every flat earth debate runs. They'll quiz people all along about how globe works, you know, explain this, explain that. As soon as they get an explanation given to them, they just bugger off to another topic and go, okay, well, go and explain something else. If you try and ask them how flat earth works, they can't give you an answer for it. I think it's also human nature, especially if you have a belief in something and something doesn't, doesn't or it kind of goes against your current belief. People <laughs> just have a tendency to push that aside. Let me go over to this thing, which confirms my belief and ignore the thing that contradicted. That could be considered dishonesty for sure. I mean, it's depending on how you define yeah, it. Yeah, I think the, the the problem is, I think is like I I kind of appreciate if you've if you've devoted you know if you've devoted yourself into thinking that the Earth is is something that it then turns out it's not. It it is going to be very difficult for you to uh, publicly acknowledge you were basically wrong about the entirety of reality. But it's when they can't even be honest about even basically insignificant aspects of those things, you know, like one tiny aspect, you get something wrong, you know, it's, it's, can you be honest about you've made a mistake with that? Can you accept that that is actually, uh, you know, that you were wrong about something or there is that potential that, you know, what, what you thought about this one little thing is, is wrong. They just, it's like they, they, they can't accept the wrong about anything. Yeah. They do have a lot invested I don't know if that really plays a part, but plus they're out there on the I, internet. It's harder to admit you're wrong, I suppose. Th this is only from memory, and I might be wrong about this, but I think I've only seen Flatsoid admit he was wrong once, at least recently, and that was when Nathan Oakley pulled him up on something, and he had, he made a stream <laughs> admitting he was wrong because, you know, with, with Oakley bringing something up. But, you know, obviously that's admitting that another Flat Earther corrected you on something, whereas the thousand and one times that he's been shown to be wrong from Globers, he just doubles down and, and says no. Then so let me ask you about Nathan. Is he a true flat earther? Not a bloody chance in hell. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not in my mind, not a chance. He's, maybe he once was, I don't know, but he's, I know there was, he got caught out a while ago where I think it was Anthony Riley he told to he told Anthony Riley in what he thought was his private side chat to stop talking about lighthouses and he referenced that for me right there who should you know says says a lot that why would you need to bring anything if you if you've got to tell somebody don't talk about a topic because it kicks your own argument in the ass you know that that's the kind of dishonesty right there but I don't watch much of Oakley's stuff anymore, but the odd times that I do, and I, I tend to play a little game where I will just click onto a stream and then I'll pick like five or six timestamps randomly and I'll just jump to it. And I can guarantee when he then next speaks, he says something along flat. the lines of Earth is measured flat, right. flat Earth elevation angles to Polaris. You can only get angles from straight lines or basically the same half dozen things he just keeps saying over and over again, even though. All of them have been debunked 101 times over, but he just doubles down on it. I lost track of how many times he said the latitudes are just flat Earth elevation angles to Polaris. 18 months ago, when I first did the video, the first response video to him, I asked him, how have you got latitudes south of the equator when you can't see Polaris from the equator? He never responded to it. I brought it up at least twice i think in all the videos he's still not addressed it that i've seen his own one of his own viewers commented about it in the chat of one of his streams and said that was actually a good point from dave <laughs> none of them have seemingly addressed it whenever anyone then comments about it on my videos nowadays i ask the same question they still can't provide the answer so i can only presume nathan has never addressed it and yet he still spouts it on. does like to make claims and say, oh, the earth is measured flatter. This has been debunked. He's, he's done a video over about the other day about me, and he's tried saying that that equatorial camera mount in the background proves the earth is flat because when I set it up, I've got to set it to level. The fact that that thing couldn't physically work on a flat earth at all goes straight over his head. He's just fixated on, well, it's level, so therefore it must be flat, even though he seemingly can't actually fathom what level means. 
or he knows what level means because he's tried to cover uh, the video that I did about surveyors, where I showed the diagram from a surveying document defining what level actually is and how it's staying the same distance above the curvature of the earth. He just, I don't know, he seems to have an aneurysm trying to get his head around it. You mentioned that you think maybe he at least started as an honest flat earther. And I think that's a good point because I feel like pretty much every flat earther starts as an honest flat earther. There might be very few exceptions, people who just decide, oh, this might be an opportunity to find a niche and I'll just pretend to be a flat earther. Flat earthers online, such as Nathan or Flatzoid, they all were honest flat earthers and no one's just pretending for fun, but it's just having trouble letting it go. I th yeah, I think I think I can see most of them uh, being on the fence about it. You know, either either unsure could be either which way, or you know, fairly certain the Earth is flat. I think the, you see a lot of the memes and stuff that people put out, and you kind of tell that the, the kind of memes that are meant to just catch people's attention, make them start immediately doubting things. And then, you know, you see enough of them, you get bombarded with enough of them in one go, you start to think, well, is it or isn't it? You start then making videos and, and then getting told by other flat earthers. This, you know, you can kind of quite easily fall down that rabbit hole if you don't kind of take the time to absorb what they're saying and actually think about it. Yeah, that's key, though. That's not a common thing among conspiracy theorists or flat earthers. But hopefully the audience is listening. I think that that was what MC Toon said his goal was in his debates was not to convince the person he's debating. He says they're, they're never going to change their mind, but the, the audience is capable of changing their mind. Yeah, yeah I had the same mentality. I, the, like I said, it was... It was more just anyone that wants to listen. So for me, I, I thought getting a flat earther, someone who is someone who's gone down that rabbit hole is very difficult to to get back out. But someone mm -hmm. who's not gone down yet is maybe on the cusp of it, kind of, you know, trying to catch them before they <laughs> fall. And and more as well, even if no flat earthers watch my videos, I know that lots of people who watch my videos then use my videos as reference and and in discussions with flat earthers like occasionally I'll, I'll go on like have a look on twitter and see what you know somebody craig mentioned a few weeks back that is all blowing up on twitter with flat earth and go and have a look and, and my name pops up quite a lot with people going oh this video from dave and this video from dave where people have, who maybe don't even use youtube as a reference tool are asking these questions my videos still get used so even if no flat earthers directly watch my videos i know that people are still able to use my videos in discussions that yeah. could hopefully stop other people from falling into the hole as well. Yeah, and indirectly helping out in that sense. Like I said, I spoke to Rachie last night. What was interesting about that and what you just said is that she saw Eric Dubay's video before she saw any of the debunkers videos, right? So I was wondering what she thought, is, is that the reason? Had she seen one of your videos or one of Dan's videos first, how did she think it would have played out? Of course, impossible to say. You know, mm -hmm. We both kind of felt, yeah, no, there's a good chance that had she seen your video first before Eric Dubay's video, that she might have never went down that rabbit hole. The problem is, it's one of those that, like, Flat Earth, Flat Earth memes, I think, was the first thing that I saw as well. Not in YouTube videos, but when I was on Facebook, it was <laughs> hosts pushing Flat Earth was what I saw before anyone debunking Flat Earth, which kind of makes sense because you need to know the source of something before you see the debunk to it. You know, it's, uh, I think, you know, you need to be at least familiar with the, the there is that argument there in the first place before you go looking for a debunk to that argument. And I think the problem is, is if you're someone who is impressionable in that sense and you see a flat earth video that then makes you start questioning things, you then inherently start questioning flat earthers as to how, you know, if you've got a question about something, how, how do you explain this? Your first protocol is going to be asking the flat earthers, how do you explain all these things rather than going finding somebody else and going, can you explain why all of that stuff is wrong? If you watch like Dave Weiss when he goes onto, onto these random YouTube channels and it, 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 he'll throw all this stuff out and then he says, yeah, you know, put all these memes up to make people start doubting things. And then he says, if you want to know more, head on over to my website that's full of these flat earth videos. So people are then going, okay, well, how do you explain sunrises? And how do you explain the, the star trail? People for themselves could probably think of several logical flaws in flat earth the first time they hear it. 
But if they then go to like his website and go finding all those videos from flat earthers, you spew enough of that and people are going to start to think, oh yeah, I go, yeah, all of this stuff makes sense because you just get bombarded with all this crap. By the time they get round to seeing the likes of my videos and, and other debunkers, they could be that far down the rabbit hole that they're, they're, they've convinced themselves they're not interested anymore. I think flat earthers in general, you see in debates, like all they seem to do is quiz about the globe. For as much as it's supposed to be a debate with one side and the other, they're not interested in showing flat earth and, and amending the flaws of flat earth. It's all just pop quiz for the globe. And I think they ask the question of a globe, can you explain this? expecting them to not be able to explain it and then when they right. do give them an explanation they just go Meh, okay off onto something else and i think maybe like uh people new people potentially being newly exposed to flat earth could kind of do the same thing whereas if they say okay well how do you explain the sunset on a flat earth if you get shown something that would potentially explain it you kind of think oh okay they have an exp i wasn't expecting them to be able to explain it but they have given enough explanations you start to think well maybe they're on maybe they've got a point they're in they're in that level of questioning just enough of wanting to know how certain things work but not not being able to put all of those arguments together in their mind and thinking those don't fit i feel like there's no there's no connection between them all or when something can't be explained they're happy to just expect yeah accept this palm off excuse like ask any flat earther where's the flat earth map they can't produce one and yet yeah. their explanations they give i've seen i've seen flat earthers say like oh it's the it's the gleason map it's the ae map but and then you say but but the scales are all wrong there's there's no one uniform scale it doesn't fit and they say oh yeah but it's different scales for different places it's like well then that's not an accurate map why can't you produce an accurate map because they know if they try and do it they wind up back with a globe <laughs> yeah it's very true but belief is an interesting thing because i don't know if you know sam harris philosopher modern no, philosopher no. atheist and public figure but i really like the way he describes belief it's rather than ex respect somebody's beliefs we evaluate their reasons if a person's reasons behind his beliefs are good enough and he can articulate them you will helplessly believe what he believes that's what it is to be a rational human being beliefs are contagious if they're backed up by reasons. Belief is not under our control. It's just a matter of making yeah. compelling arguments and enough of them, I think. I think for me, and that's where the kind of, like say the dishonesty side of it comes in, where I think I think all flat earthers, most flat earthers are being dishonest, whether they're being dishonest with other people or just themselves. Yeah. But the only sort of what you could say is non-dishonest flat earthers who are the ones who actually take on board the arguments put against what they've said and try and address them flatter the explanation for this on flat earth is this and then someone goes okay but i've debunked that because it doesn't work because of this they then try and correct and amend their original claims to address the problem with it and the only ones that i can think of who've done that would be rachie stst and ranzi who are no longer flat earthers <laughs> Yeah, credit to them for actually being able to admit to themselves they're wrong and admit to community that they're wrong because you get cut off quite a bit. Yeah. She was a moderator on Flatoid's channel and now they're at each other's throat. Rachie's a bloody force to be reckoned with. She honestly is. I think the worst day for Flat Earth is when she, when she realized that she was wrong and actually prepared to admit it because she has absolutely owned that by a country mile. She's not she's not sheepishly gone, oh, I, I was wrong, oh, no, gone quiet. She's absolutely turned around and pulled the rug from under them. She's, it's a result of her being accused of being a shill or a funny or paid or a liar and that's what she took exception to and that's why she's on the high raid that she's yeah. on to really tear into yeah it. it's hilarious for me it was when we're like flat earthers say to us oh you know you know they get really defensive and go so what if somebody's got a, an opinion different you know can't we just all have our own opinions and share these opinions and then you get someone like rachie and stsc who both said the same thing which is when they were flat earthers flat earth community loved them mm -hmm. and and as soon as they publicly turned around and said, mm, actually, I think I was wrong about all of this, you know, they, they just lambasted from, from Flat Earth com completely and, and turned into this, oh, well, you were never really a true Flat Earth. Oh, that, yeah, that's amazing. They think that people were paid off to change their mind or give up Flat Earth and make Globe Earth content. It means you must have been paid. I, I love that notion. Yeah, I love that argument. <laughs> Again, this is this for me is just where Flat Earth claims get ridiculous. And for much as Flat Earthers say you should question things, 
they never seem to question their own logic. They've said to they said about all through the any flat earthers that I know of who have gone back to globe get accused of you've been paid by NASA, you've been paid by whoever. No Always. flat earth has ever turned around and said NASA have approached me and tried to bribe me into saying the earth is a globe. <laughs> That's true. Wow, I never actually thought about that. That is a very good point. Yeah, when when you expand on their logic and take their own arguments and build up on it, it makes no sense. It, what's the point of this big conspiracy? Why, if the Earth is really flat, why go through this big this this big lie about it being a globe? What what's the benefit to anybody? Because it's going to be every space agency, every government, every government past, present, and future is going to have to be on board with this. What is the benefit? And I've had flat earthers say it's it's to protect, to stop people from discovering what's beyond it, like the natural resources beyond the known world. I'm like, <laughs> the that. only natural resources that I can think of that anyone's going to care about would be like crude oil, which we're the consumers. We need, you know, they need us to know about it, to buy it. You know, resources are nothing if you haven't got people to sell them to. Or people have said it's to hide God. The, the true existence of God is beyond it. And I'm like, if God is this all powerful being who can build a flat, who build this whole world and civilization, I'm pretty sure it's going to need more than governments and space agencies to hide God. If God wants it to be discovered, surely no mortal would be able to stop him. And yeah. if we could get to those far lands and God didn't want to be found, he could hide himself from us. So. There's there's no benefit, but it's when you take that their their argument and run with the logic of it, it doesn't actually make any sense. And their own arguments wind up coming back to bite them on the ass. But they never seem to question their own logic. They just want to question everybody else's. I was actually going to go there and say the explanation I've heard because the only flat earther, well, aside from Richie being a former flat earther, the only flat earther I've had on the channel has been Flatzoid, and we had a mm. very friendly conversation. And I asked him that exact question: Why would anyone try? to keep the shape of the earth a secret and go to all this trouble, what would make it worth it? And his answer was to keep people away from God. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not personally, I'm not, re I'm not religious in that sense, but, but that's, that's, I don't believe there's a God. I don't know if there's a God or not. I've no idea. I might be right. I might be wrong. All I'm going off is all the evidence that I've seen. I personally don't believe it, but mm -hmm. I've no objections to other people obviously believing that, but I can still question and go, like, if they were trying to hide God, then you wouldn't know about God. <laughs> no, they're, so they're not trying to hide God. They're, they're, apparently, they're trying to keep people from leaving God. So Flatzoid's logic was, if people knew the Earth was round or a globe, that would dissuade people. Because that, he, in his mind, it contradicts the Bible. And so if people right. find evidence of, that contradicts the Bible, that would push people away from God. So, And that's what people are trying. That is, what, that is the cover-up. So that is why they're trying to convince people that the earth is a globe is to push people away from god apparently does it yeah oh, oh yeah think about that first it took you a second there to let, let that sink in right i see so i see so it's not that they're trying to keep him away right i see so it's it's more they're trying to get away they're trying to turn people away from the belief of god of, of a god right exactly right okay the thing is like I mean, but then there's plenty of uh, religious people who believe in the heliocentric model and it doesn't mean that god couldn't have created everything i mean you know he created the heavens and the earth he cre you know he could have created the whole light so the thing again doesn't really sit as a as a logical argument and then i would still argue that you know i, I would still question if if god really wanted people to believe in him there are ways that he could do that that would you know that humans would have no control over <laughs> right yeah there, yeah you I mean, and i think alike if, yeah yeah, I mean, for me personally, I will believe in God when I actually see God. You know, if God want, if God really wants me to believe in Him, He could turn up on my doorstep, and, <laughs> and I would believe in Him. But I don't need to be, you know, told that the Earth's a globe for that. I just, you know, need to see Him. What you said was my exact response to what he said, which was, "But the majority of religious people throughout the world believe in the globe," and we kind of just left it there. It didn't make sense to me. It did in, th in theory, but in reality, most. Religious people are not flat earthers, so the, the globe model and everything was in existence long before any space agencies and the likes were were created to try and, and push all of that. So yeah, oh well, it's what it is. There is a correlation between flat earthers and being religious. There was a study by you uh, YouGov that basically 
long story short, when people asked, how religious are you? 50 something percent of flat earthers check very religious, which was the mm. highest level on, option available. And compared to only 22% of the total population of the survey. So yeah. flat earthers yeah. definitely tend to be more religious. What, what do you make of that? I could kind of see that because I know there are a lot of arguments that flat earth has put forward where it's based around the claims that the Bible say the earth is flat. So I could understand it of if if you're religious and you don't want to say question that kind of thing, if you, you know, if if, if you were shown in a convincing way that to made to believe that the Bible says the earth is flat, then why you would take that on board. Um, but I think the problem is, from what I've seen of, I've, I've not read through the Bibles, but from what I've seen where people have covered it, it doesn't categorically say the earth is flat. It, it says, you know, it varies from translation to translation, but it's generally done in a quite vagueish manner where you could interpret it how you want. So I could kind of understand it where if you were, you know, if you if you were religious and then you were shown all of this to say, well, look, God says the earth is flat and you interpret it the same way as to why you would go to, go on with that. But you know, I think 56% of flat earth as being very religious obviously doesn't mean that 56 percent of very religious people means the earth is flat so i think right. it's probably one of those that most flat earthers are religious but not all religious people are flat earthers uh, you know obviously there are a lot of um like you said there's a lot of religious people who don't believe the earth is is flat either so you know they've, they've still gone with the, the belief of god and yet taken science and evidence on board so i think it varies a lot from people to people and i think a lot of it as well is people's trust within you know the the people that run society as well i see quite a lot of comments from people who basically don't believe a lot of the stuff because they don't trust the government and they don't trust nasa and you know so even though they might not be entirely convinced as to what the true argument is they're just going well the government says it's this and i don't trust them so i'm going to just go the opposite direction yeah so almost anything but what they said one correlation that almost is undeniable, well, two things, the debunking community, so Dan, Creaky, Toon. First of all, a disproportionate amount of you guys are from the UK. <laughs> I don't know how that is. I don't know what you make of that. But also, all of you, including myself, are essentially atheists. There's a disproportionate amount of atheists that are debunking and pushing back against flat earth or conspiracy. What do you think that is? Um, uh, well, I mean, speculate, but like I say, the reason I've not gone down the route of religion was because i going back to what i said earlier in terms of why i like science i like understanding why things work why things are the way they are which is what science you know physics is 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 seeing an observation and trying to work out what's causing that observation and testing it and methodically trying to work out the root cause so i've always being in that mindset of if if there's something I don't understand, I want to know why I don't understand it and, and want to go and find the answer and understand it better. And until I've got something that I can actually physically see, you know, to grasp the concept, if you will, I, you know, I'm never really satisfied. And I think flat earthers are kind of more happy to just accept things on faith, you know, in the same way as religion. Even though they can't see God, even though they've not seen God, they're happy to take the word that there is God. And, you know, it's a very sticky uh, kind of, <laughs> it's a very, yeah. very, very big minefield to try and tread through without offending somebody. But it just yeah. seems on, on balance, like, you know, I think, I think, you know, some people maybe just have never considered God or you know, never found it, whatever. Other people who've maybe questioned, could it have been, could it not? Like I, I did years ago, never, never properly. Like my parents were both, weren't religious, but were christened. They'd said very, from an earlier age, they told me they'd never christened me, but wouldn't yeah. object if I wanted to. They basically said they were going to leave it to me to decide. And I remember randomly, like, I must have only been about, nine or ten and it was in some hotel room somewhere and there was like a you know bible in it and i picked it up and started trying to read it and it didn't make any bloody sense to me because it's all written it was all written like really weird word and stuff but you know and then we've done like religious education in school and that and constantly i'm just quizzing like well but this why this why that why this why that so i i never i never talked to it because none of it kind of 
you know, the, none of the explanations fit for me in terms of to a satisfactory level. So that that's why I never did. I think if you, you know, maybe you're somebody who is happy to accept things just on word rather than actual evidence, then, you know, flat earth is more word than actual evidence. And so you're more susceptible to go down that route. Yeah, I suppose that that makes sense. Some people would say religion a lot on indoctrination as a child, but you can't say the same for flat earth, right? And it's not elementary school children watching flat earth content, it's usually grown adults. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I know flat earthers often say about indoctr indoctrination for the globe, and they've half got, a, I mean, say they've half got a point in the sense that you're taught from a very early age the earth is a globe, and most people don't question it, but then most people's day to day lives don't really, aren't really affected by whether the earth is a globe or not. You know, everybody just doesn't think day to day in the mindset that the earth is a globe. And they're watching the sunset and you think the sun's setting and it's not, it's, you know, it's us turning away from it. But your mind, our minds, we're so tiny on this, on this planet. We think just localized. We don't think in the big scale of the earth. So, you know, you're not, you're not really thinking about the earth as a globe. So yeah, I can understand that for most kids who, you know, for, for most people who could, could be born in a city and never leave the city, would never really consider the bigger picture of things who will go through life just thinking, yeah, I'm happy to accept that without questioning it. That doesn't mean that you can't question it. You know, and if you, if you question the globe, the answers are all there. It's when, you know, you've got flat earth, you try questioning flat earth, the answers aren't there. Have you ever met a flat earther in real life or do you know any in real life, either friend or family member? Have you been approached by a flat earther out in public? Not directly. Um, not directly. Although I knew, I do now realize, um, are you familiar with Peter and Pete? Peter and Pete. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah. Or Pete and repeat as I, as, oh, as I prefer to call them. Cause, yeah, no, they're not, they're, they're actually called Peter and Pete, but they always wind up just basically repeating each other's sentences. So <laughs> they get referred to as Pete and repeat. They are, they're actually, turns out I used to live not far from where they, they go stand in the, in the street in, in the city of Chester and, and preach flat earth. And it turns out I, like I actually used to live around there. So <laughs> I never bummed into them. I think they started after I'd moved, but yeah, <laughs> it was very close to, very close to them. Never met one in person. I have had, funnily enough, I was doing a photography job last, yeah, last year, last summer, and a, a graduation photography, like uni graduation photography. And one of the, the, the students all just obviously come in one by one, and, and there's loads of photo booths, <laughs> and, and all these students come in, some with parents and some without. And this, this lad came in with his dad, and his dad took one look at me and went, I know you. I was like, oh. do you? <laughs> I was like, and I'm just thinking, he's, he's someone I, um, you know, someone I've met before, someone I've, I've like, photographed, seen at a wedding or whatever, or I didn't really know when he's like, you're, you're, you're on YouTube, aren't you? So we, we got to <laughs> chat in and he was really, really, really great guy. But then the next family that walked in, obviously seeing this, having this big conversation, and then I'm doing this guy, this, his son's photo. So he starts talking to the next family, explaining how, he knows me off YouTube and I do all mm. these YouTube videos debunking flat earth. And then after he left the second family, the guy kind of the, the husband held back after the others had left and was like, my brother-in-law's a flat earther. He's nuts. <laughs> was like, indirectly. He was like, I should have brought him with, I should have brought him with us today. I was like, probably best you didn't. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking of saying that. That's better. That so, would be better. Yeah. Idea. Never, never directly met, but have met people who, uh, who have family members who are flat earthers. I think we probably have actually met flat earthers. It's not like everyone just says yeah, they're... it's not the kind of conversation you walk up and go, do you know the earth is flat or not? But right. yeah, so I pro probably have met them, but never knowingly. Is that the first time or only time you've been recognized in public or does it happen often? It's happened a couple of times. It happened once a few years ago when I was doing the photography videos, but that was, I was in Germany in Cologne. Uh, there was a big photography show on and I'd been invited by one of the companies there to do some talks. I mean, one of the other photographers were out in the city afterwards and somebody recognized us, but that's kind of not unexpected given that it's, it's one of the biggest photography shows in the world as photographers, you know, people who love photography all kind of congregate there. So running into someone who recognizes you within that same city is not that unusual. Um, 
just the other day, somebody did recognize me. Um, it just randomly in the street, I was I had my camera and I was just looking on the back of the camera and then somebody just, excuse me, are you Dave McKeegan? Camera gave you it away, I recognize you, I'm subscribed to your <laughs> channel. I'm like, I was like, I should have hid that. But yeah, so it, it's happened a couple of times, but not huge amounts. Is there anything coming up new for your channel? Any project you're excited to work on that you can uh, share with me? Well, I mean, it's sort of more just the same really for now. I've got, in fact, in about 15 minutes, the next video I've got goes live, which is tackling flat earthers complete misunderstanding of perspective mm. which will probably go in one ear and straight out the other for most people but yeah basically the this video and the next video that i'm doing is taking apart flat earthers claims of how bottom-up obstruction happens on a flat earth which is kind of one of the most fundamental observations that you can make the earth as a globe is the fact that everything disappears bottom first so I kind of figure if you remove the arguments as to how it could work on a flat Earth, then flat Earthers don't have an explanation for bottom-up obstruction anymore. Um, you know, kind of back to the drawing board for them. So I've got those coming up. Um, and then I'm kind of thinking I've done quite a lot of flat Earth videos consecutively now. I've not done any moon landing stuff for a while. So there's a... Whoa. Of course, he's just dropping everything now. Um Boom. I've done, uh, yeah, I've done quite a lot of flat Earth videos recently, um, so I think I might then go back to covering some of the moon landing topics, like the Van Allen belts, camera film in a vacuum, as to whether it can work or not. So yeah, it's more just for now, at least the the stuff that I've got at least laid out is more of the same, just debunking claims i do Correct. keep toying with wanting to do sort of like where i did the iss maybe go back and doing andromeda um also yeah showing how to photograph the stars properly rather than flat earth as blurry blobs of color that they then think is the firmament yeah and the fact that you can get like you can buy equipment that will pick up in, you, you can pick up information off a satellite yourself and you can actually download the raw data feed from the observation satellites that are in orbit like the weather satellites and stuff and you can actually see the earth so i keep toying with trying to get the an antenna and and the likes to do that and maybe see if i can get a pick up one of the geostationary satellites and show the entire earth so for every flat earth that says can you show me a photo of the globe i'm like yeah there but Again, you know, probably won't yeah. take it. I look forward to their uh, their reason it's not uh, acceptable. They don't answer the question. If you could put a video out, uh, put a video out showing them a picture of the globe, they will talk about anything but the picture of the globe, and then bring it up somewhere else in a different in a different video. That's seemingly the way they work. I, most of my videos have dozens of flat Earth comments, and pretty much never are the comments actually about the topic of the video. Well, flat earthers ask about a question and they will say, like, for example, this, this video that I've got coming up today is where flat earthers have claimed that a ship in the distance would be obscured by a small wave because even though the wave is smaller than the observer because they can't fathom perspective, they bring that up in comments about videos that have nothing to do with perspective. But I'll guarantee uh, this video goes up showing how it doesn't work at all they won't want to talk about it. They'll bring it up in three videos time when I'm talking about something completely different. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. As I mentioned at the start, part two of this conversation is coming soon or possibly already out, depending on when you're watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.